sir. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, it is the morning, day two of our Grand Canyon field trip. Just got dropped off, headed to the Yavapai Point Geology Museum. Today we're walking along the Trail of Time, which should be pretty cool. done getting a little tour of the geology museum it's fantastic all kinds of things to see there here we are at the beginning of the trail of time and they've got these really cool monuments that were built here that have the actual stratigraphy and layers of the rocks themselves starting up here at the kaibab limestone there's the coconino all the way down through the paleozoic then there are the tilted Precambrian rocks and the metamorphic rocks below that. And here's a cool thing. All of these little patios are paved with the rock of the appropriate time. Now here, at basically zero years, they used some of the younger travertine blocks, which are uh, not exactly one year old. But they're the youngest, some of the youngest things. There's also some columnar basalts here, which are also fairly young in the park. Younger than the Permian stuff at the top. Now at four different places on the Trail of Time, they have one of these things constructed out of Grand Canyon rocks. And if you stand on either side of it, you'll see the profile of the canyon and the rock layers as they exist in the Grand Canyon. This is actually a layer taken from the Kaibab limestone. This is 300 feet down to the next layer, the Toro Wheat Formation, the Coconino Sandstone, which is the bathtub ring that we're looking across to the North Rim, the Hermit Formation, the Supai Group, the Red Wall Limestone, the Muav Limestone, the Bright Angel Shale, and the Tapit Sandstone. And all of those are actually taken from the Taken from the So rocks. somebody went down there and cut it and hauled it back up. Well, what happened is these rocks were cut in Denver, but they were collected <laughs> by rafting trips through the Grand Canyon. Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah. This trail was already here along the rim, but now it's also multi-purposed as a <coughs> geologic timeline. And for non-geologists, that in itself is a huge leap. <laughs> that you can portray time horizontally from a vertical stack of rocks. And we are starting right here at Saturday, September 21. It says today right here. And each meter represents an increment of time. Now what they have done here on this end of the trail is that each meter represents one year. Until you get to the year 60 down there, and then the next meter says 70 years. There's increments of 10 years then. Eventually the years become one meter is a thousand years, one meter is a hundred thousand years, and we're just going to get to another one of these pedestals here, and then we start the trail of time so that for the rest of it, each meter is one million years. The idea with this is to kind of telescope time and get people to understand that a million years is really a long period of time to a human being. One year, two years, three years, and so on. At the beginning here, all of these markers are one year. Until you get, here it is, here's number 60. After this, they start going in 10 year intervals. 70, 80, 90, 100. Now every meter is a decade instead of a year. 190, 200. Now at this point, 
everyone is 100 years, 300, 400, 500, 13, 14. Now they're up to 1,000. All right, we're at 300,000, 400,000, five, six, seven, 800, 900,000, one million years. Should be like do the Austin Powers thing. We've walked one million years on the trail through time. Again, there's another one of these really cool markers. Look at this business. Oh, this magnetic nice is just gorgeous. Fantastic. You see the isoclinal folding present in the magnetized parts, which were of course melt at one point. And we get to 1 million. And from this point forward, the medallions will be on this side of the trail. And now each medallion represents 1 million years for the rest of the trail of time. So this is a way to telescope time and to try to get people to understand how big time is. Two million, three, four, five, six million years old. Now, there's a little display here. It says that the Grand Canyon is six million years old. That's a bit of a controversial statement. Um, it's more correct to say that the Colorado River system as we know it today is 6 million years old. The canyon itself is a little bit more mysterious because there could have been precursory canyons and precursory rivers that were together or in part comprising the system. But the whole system as we understand it today of the Colorado River is in place at 6 million years old. Well, it has taken us a while, but we are finally at the first bedrock layer. The Kaibab limestone is 270 million years old. It's Permian. And it is this, of course, this top layer that you see in the uh, cliffs of the Grand Canyon. There's a nice little explanation here. Right away, we get to the Toroweep sandstone and then to the Coconino sandstone. It doesn't take very long when you're stepping through here. And again, you can see the Toro Weep is this sort of intermediate layer. And then the Coconino down below. Okay, well, I have to confess, I haven't been paying close enough attention to the rocks because I suddenly went from the Permian to the Cambrian. There's been a lot of great conversations and stopping and gaping and all this with what you'd expect from being near the Grand Canyon. But here we are at the mauve limestone. This is 505 million years old. So we're into the Cambrian here. And then there's another one of our markers, 510. These sedimentary guys are really geeking out over these rock layers. Uh, here is the Bright Angel Shale listed at 515. Up here is the base of the Cambrian. So here's the Tapeats sandstone, bottom of the Cambrian, and some really nice layers. This rock is lots of little uh, bits of it. There are some quartz, and I'm told there's jasper chert. Really nice. Well, we have left the Phanerozoic. We've gone 500 million years. But unfortunately, we still got to go another 1,500 million years on this trail. And uh, I'm not sure what else we're going to see. It's going to be a lot of time here to make this rest of the walk.
So we are getting near the bottom of the super group. This is the dock sandstone. Lots of nice little mud cracks on it. This is, of course, the bottom layer. Those are mud crack casts. 1.130 billion years old. That's a long drop. One thing I want to tell you that when the super group was still flat lying, the total thickness of the super group was 12,000 feet. Two and a half miles of sediment. Remember, the Grand Canyon is 5,000 feet deep. So imagine two and a half times the depth of the Grand Canyon for the thickness of the super group. Wayne, if the canyon is a mile deep, how can you put a package of rocks that's two and a half miles thick in the Grand Canyon? And of course the answer is the super group is tilted. And the general amount of time from the bottom to the top is about uh, 400 or 500 million years. We are about three quarters of the way along the hike here. And coming to the end of it, we've passed through the Grand Canyon Super Group, about 500 million years worth of sedimentary rocks deposited in the middle to Neoproterozoic. Nice three quarter moon up there following us along on this trip. Made it to another one of the granite bodies. They're collectively, kind of colloquially referred to as Zoroaster granite, but there's actually multiple ones. Look at these really nice cross-cutting granite dikes full of K feldspar. And here we are, folded Vishnu basement rock. Beautiful tigmatic folding in that layer there. Well, we have reached the end of the trail here and there's a number of blocks of rock along here at the end um, that are, again, more of the basement rocks from the Vishnu schist and the various granites that intrude it. It's uh, really spectacular. Sometimes when I'm out here in the field and I'm vlogging, I kind of hear the narrative that I want to tell kind of in my head. And a lot of times I hear it as a, a narration over the top of the, you know, the B-roll footage. And a uh, little secret, most of the time that voice I hear is Bear Grylls. I don't know why, but uh, that's the voice I hear in my head. So, I mean, Bear, do you think maybe you'd be willing to help me close out this video with a little narration about the Grand Canyon for a favor? What do you think? Absolutely. You all right for it? You up for it? Absolutely. All right. The Grand Canyon is one of the wildest places on Earth. It's the kind of place where you won't last a day without the right survival skills and proper knowledge. It's 277 miles long and around 6,000 feet deep. The schists at the bottom are around 2 billion years old. With about 6 million visitors each year, the parking can be absolutely terrible. Walking up here along the rim of the Trail of Time, I've had to pee for about a billion years. If you come visit this extraordinary national park, you better be ready for a wild adventure. This brings us to the end of the trail. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I certainly have enjoyed this. It's been incredible. And this canyon is so amazing. Every time I come here, there's something new. Definitely encourage you to come out. So, till the next one.